when I left Memphis, Tennessee to go to New York, I was so scared. But one thing my mother always told me was to get them dollars. Mafia has passed away. She was found dead at a house in Whitehaven yesterday evening. Uh, now she is being remembered across the area and, in fact, all across the country. Have you heard of the saying, a closed mouth won't get fed? Open. I just did. <laughs> closed mouth won't get fed. A closed mouth won't get fed. So I'm saying, like, if you don't open your mouth and say what you want, you ain't gonna get it. And so what I'm doing is opening my mouth, telling people what I want in the industry and out the whole the whole world. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. get it while again it's good, get it while you can. Instead of on some commercial mm -hmm. stuff, I'm like straight out thugging. Right. Ghetto queen with mine. Right. You know what I'm saying? Coming from the hood with it. So. Uh, that's just your flavor. That's, that's it. That's right, it. You're putting it down. That's it. All right. So when you, went, when, when you was itty bitty gangster group, who <laughs> were some of the female artists or what MCs in general were influencing you? Who did you want to be like? Who was like, oh, they tight? The brat. <laughs> I love murder dogs. Big up this out of line. We love them. That you. Y'all help us go gold. Thank all of our fans. We love everybody. Keep buying our shit. My album is inquiring minds. Yes, the book. We have three, six mafia. Tell all of our thugs. A lot of shit. From 9, 8, until 2G. You know what I'm saying? It's eternal. So, fuck with us. We heard and we talk and... You know, we vent and we rant and all that type of stuff, but uh, Juicy reached out to me um, through Paul, and I hit him up, and we talked for a minute, and it was all love. He was telling me why he felt the way he felt during the time he did what he did, and I told him how I felt, and um, pretty much we just have, we can agree to disagree, and we all have the same common goal in mind, which is to keep the Three Six Mafia legacy and name alive and untainted by us, at least. So, yeah, yeah I talked to him um, right after he performed with Katy Perry, to actually text her um, after the Grammy performance. So, yeah, we, we definitely called him. I was surprised. Um, you know, I went to go support him at one of his concerts he had in Memphis. The only reason I even went because my friends, it was like, yo, um, Juicy got a show, you know, you want to go? I was like, oh, why not? I ain't doing shit else. I'm in Memphis. I might as well go. And he, they asked him about me in interviews, obviously. And um, he spoke, you know, good. He spoke well on uh, the, the placement I got on Yellow Wolf album with Eminem. So I haven't seen him in, like, I don't know, over 10 years. Like, literally have not seen him since I left mm. the group. Like, I haven't seen Juicy in person since, like, 2001. So I was like, I like his music. I could go. Went to the show. All the rappers were there from Memphis, Don Tripp, um, a lot of dope DJs in Memphis. And I was backstage, really just socializing, socializing with everybody backstage. So um, Juicy got there. I still didn't see him. Next thing I know, they knocking on the door. They was like, come here, Sybil. And um, the promoter, he was like, Juicy was like, he don't want nobody back. He don't want nothing but his family and friends backstage. And we told him he was back here and he don't want you backstage. I was like, that surprised me because it's like, Nigga, fuck you. I'm just here supporting you. I'm not trying to dick ride you or nothing. Like, I know you. I wasn't Gangster Boo with the group. Yeah, one. she was with the group. It lasted about a month. <laughs> <laughs> what happened after that month? <laughs> no, nah, it lasted longer than a month. As long as we wasn't around each other. But once we was around each other for a month, it lasted exactly one month. Okay, so, so y'all two just, after extended periods of time, you and Gangster Boo just start to kill each other. Yeah, it was damn near. Damn, damn near about that. Yeah, it was down there. Down there right there. Let me explain something to you is out there. Who got something to say about me not coming to boo funeral? Got paid for the funeral, ho. I'm on motherfucking tour, and even if I wasn't, I don't do funerals. 
The last time I was at a funeral, it wasn't nothing but a bunch of groovy ass motherfuckers up in that mother. Bunch of just want to come up and talk to me and all this old shit. Bitch ass niggas. Who know how much I loved her? She know how much I know how much she loved me, nigga. I ain't got nothing to prove to none of you punk ass group ass niggas up in there. Cause it would be number about four or five motherfuckers in there if it wasn't for who I created. Nigga, what I created. The teenage girl that I found, nigga, I'm the one who wrote Where the Dollars at Hook, nigga. I'm the one who was writing and producing that shit. Yes, she did her verses, she did some hooks. Juicy was doing beats, he was doing hooks. But I discovered her, nigga. I went to school with her. She went to school with me. Motherfucker, you niggas wouldn't be in that group of ass niggas that's fucking running up behind her ass because of what I did, nigga, what I created. And all you motherfuckers got something to say about, oh, look at her coffin, nigga. Her mama want her to be cremated like the rest of their family, nigga. What the fuck we gonna spend money on an expensive ass coffin for when she finna get cremated? So y'all shut the fuck up, nigga, and go home. Go back to y'all motherfucking holes, nigga. If something, if something don't work uh, between people uh, vibrantly or whatever, however you want to word it, 16 years ago, you know, 16 years later, it really ain't going to work. You know what I'm saying? You know, 14 years ago or later or whatever it was. In my book, it's not going to be like a tell-all or nothing. You know, I don't ex try to exploit nobody's business. Um, but this is going to be basically about the ups and downs that I, I did experience with them as a female so young because I was like 15 years old when I got with them. And I had my first deal with Relativity when I was 17. We even changed my birth date on the contract because my mother was supposed to sign it with me, but I signed it myself without a lawyer or nothing. So uh, that says a lot there. But what happened, it was just, um, you know, you can't mix business with pleasure. And I, I'll say that to say the least. And... Um, it was a good experience, but it was a bad experience. It was a spiritual experience. It was a religious experience. It was just crazy. But um, for the most part, all the details will be in my book. What do you think that I should do? Since you respect your against the boo. And I don't pay homage to the truth. Should I go rampage up in the booth? And I tell them how I really feel. Can I depend on you to keep it real? Who that? Bitch, you know you ain't real. Put us on the same song and I will kill these niggas. Niggas that grind these niggas. Nigga, where were y'all when the bigger picture wasn't even big enough to bust it if it was a pill? Pimple, fake at home, made me sick. Got my clothes off, now I get my ass a kiss. Man, I shut shit down when I'm in my time. Why you walking around with your head in the air like you the shit? And I'ma give you a wrong answer. Lace front on your head like you got cancer. I'm not talking about just one or two. Why be talking about all you rappers? Hey, no, my campaign, I think you need to choose your battles wisely. If you think that I'ma let you take over my dynasty, I kill, kill, kill. Murder, murder, murder. I've been getting money, I've been taking trips. I did it way before you. And I like bald. Kate Michelle called me because she was on the show. That was my first time even doing reality TV. Long story short, I take my charges. Whatever I do, I own up to what I do. But when I saw that shit and the fact how they just edited that shit and did that shit, I just couldn't believe it. But what was it, weed? Man, I don't know what the fuck. I never saw shit. I don't know what the fuck. I thought brother weed straight up. This is what you're gonna go through. Mom's got a drinking problem, um, but then you started writing and you met people that would inspire you to keep creating more and more and more. And then you became a rapper. You made a lot of money, but then you end up losing all of your friends. Your dad is gonna die. Your brother's gonna die. Your grandmama's gonna die. Your grandpa, your grandfather's gonna die. Well, was, your DJ. Slow down. You're rushing through it. <laughs> Why are you going so fast? Because I lost like yeah. 20 people in seven years. Oh my <laughs> I rap when I get paid for it in the studio. What up, Marlon? Keith on, Norman. <laughs> well, a joint or something. Is so, yo, anyway. I do, um, I've been in the studio recording on some new music, and, uh, doing features and shit like that. What up, Sade? 
Much love, baby. So what y'all doing on a Sunday? Tell me what y'all cooking. What's going on? What, what's cooking in the kitchen? I'm obviously just starting to. So I left the group um, just on, a, on my own path. But I say 2020, I was young and just didn't know. My business or shit, bro. I didn't know shit. I was bumping like a motherfucker, doing my thing, but I didn't know nothing but besides I could rap. That's all but, I know. What made you feel you needed to go that spiritual route? Like, what? Uh, was there something that happened? Yeah, it's, just, it's, it's I'm chosen. I know I'm, I'm just a chosen individual. Like, I'm smart. Like, um, like I'm spiritual right now. You know, well, just in general. Like, I'm chosen. I know I'm, I'm just a chosen individual. Because I heard you refer to the industry as wicked. Did you feel like you needed to go into another uh, space? Well, he, well, he, well, he said, he didn't use the word wicked, but he said it was, you know. I heard I use, what do y'all say? Well, wicked? how about this? I, I, I feel like the world is a wicked, you know, it's good and bad. It's, it's wicked right. ways. You know, I have wicked ways. Um, Did something drive you in that yeah, direction? Um, yeah, depression. Okay. But I was 21, so at that time, to be honest. But how can you be depressed at the, depressed at the top of the world? I mean, think about how much but, at that age what she was doing. Yeah, but too. also the lack of knowledge, though. I didn't know how to handle right. shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I was taking X pills, like having fun. Like, you know, all this shit, man. Motherfuckers can talk about how they lit and turned up on all this shit. If you can't balance that shit out and know how to balance that shit out, right. it can't, it's a chemical fucking imbalance. Come chemical on, you kidding me? Yeah. People can take all these prescription medications, but guess what? If you listen to that motherfucker that's talking fans to the end of the commercial, what are you going to be saying? A bunch of shit. All, this shit's all them side on, effects. Right, yeah. So that's yeah, yeah. off the market shit that we buy and put in our system. Right. So yeah, I felt depressed, but I also always felt chosen. Just So anyway, I just decided to leave the group. I don't know why. We were supposed to do Jenny Jones and I didn't show up. It was for my album, actually. But um, so when I left at that young age, when they was all this success was happening after me, because we were we was successful in general. Right. But as I think back, it was it was like it, 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 we was just popular as fuck. Them niggas got famous. <laughs> right, right. <laughs>